Happy Valentine's Day folks and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special video for you all and I've been lucky enough to be invited by the amazing Céline Plasticienne here on YouTube to join a collaboration with some amazing artists. This collab is called World Pastries and we are each creating a doll based on a dessert from our own countries. From left to right we have dolls here by Enchanterium, Val Kitty's World, Mr. Super Customs, me, Josephine's Creatures, Kiro's Workshop, and of course, Céline Plasticienne. All of these creations are absolutely amazing, and please, please go watch their videos too, and follow them if you're not already. Link to their YouTube channels are in the description box below. I have a lot of admiration from some of these artists, and it would really mean a lot if you'd give them a bit of love. It's what Valentine's Day is about, isn't it? Though, <laughs> enough salt talk for now, let's get going. I've received recently this amazing doll customization sketchbook from Dolly Mixtures. It's a really handy to sketch ideas and take notes, so I used it for this project. My doll is based on something very Canadian that takes me back from when I was a child. Maple taffy served on snow. Here we have places we call sugar shack, or as we say in French, cabane à sucre. And many families visit those in late winter or early spring, usually in March, and have an amazing day in a rural area. It means traditional French-Canadian music, an afternoon in the woods, maybe sometimes on a horse-led carriage, a lot of dancing, and a very hearty meal loaded with everything that goes well with maple syrup. It's also usually included uh, with a ticket for a very unusual sweet, maple taffy. The taffy is made with boiling hot maple syrup and the thickened mixture is then poured on fresh clean snow and then we pick it up with a popsicle stick and eat it just on its own. To me it tastes like childhood and we used to go every year when I was a kid. I guess you can say it's a very Canadian thing to do, but well, <laughs> let's get customizing. For this custom, I'll be using for the first time a Rochelle Goyle Monster Heidel. It's actually one of my favorites, so I was happy to give it a go. I'm sorry though, I've tried many different things in the last months and so, with new gear and ways to better my work area, and the footage for the preparation and rerouting of that doll is just unusable. Though if you watch a lot of doll customization videos, you probably know already how it's done. For the face now. Her skin tone is grey, so on the first few layers, I used my soft pastels to try to bring a lively color to her face, as well as to give her rosy cheeks, as if she's been outside all day and trust me, her Canadian springs can be quite chilly. Please excuse my dry hands. Rochelle has a very intense sculpt, for a lack of a better word and her features are very pronounced, and I'm, I'm just trying to go with it. trying to better my heart, so this time I decided I was going to work a bit differently than usual on this face. Instead of endlessly sketching, I decided to start placing more definitive colors and shade them as I go, layers after layers. I'm hoping that this will help me keep my lines sharper. Like usual, I am using Mr. Super Clear as my sealant. I sprayed three thin coats before I started working, and each time my colors stop building, or if I want to save my progress, I give up another coat and let it dry completely before picking up my pencils and pastels up again. I chose warm tones for her eyes because I felt like this would contribute to the color story well. 
Her hair is actually all white, save for a sizable section at the front, which was rerouted with a mix of brown, orange and blonde yarn fibers. This is my way of trying to imitate taffy poured on fresh snow. I am using a tiny, flat, square-ish brush to sketch her eyebrows with pastel. Then I keep on building some colors to gradually build intensity. I use a white pastel pencil to place some highlights and then start brightening the scleras. Then I gently blend it out where it's needed. One thing I often do is using somewhat unconventional colors to build shadows instead of something flat like a pure black or grey. Here, I'm using a dark purple to build darkness into some brown. I feel like this brings things a bit more to life. I remember learning in art school that the most natural shadows are painted with complementary colors, and this is definitely handy knowledge. I'm not doing exactly that, as in by the book, of course, but this still makes me want to experiment and, you know, play with colors. but that pencil is actually green. I feel like using a bit of it may make her eyes pop a little more. to try to use it as sparingly as possible, I save the black pencil for the end of the process. I love the contrast it gives, but I didn't want to let it accidentally overpower the whole thing. Once I'm done with pencils, I start on a fresh layer with paints. I am using gouache and watercolors, mainly to define some really fine details and make other pops like the eye whites or the lashes. The advantage of these paints over acrylics is the fact that I can easily wash mistakes with a little bit of water. This is probably my favorite step of the face-up.
face with a dusting of mica powders, mixing some pinks and a bit of white. I sandwich these in a few layers of sealant before the final seal, just to make sure that the matte Mr. Super Clear doesn't make the shine all disappear. Then once completely sealed and dry, I can gloss her lips. I am now on to hair styling. I've rerouted her partially with some acrylic yarn. The white is on the part and on the perimeter of the head, but it is thick enough as it is to be pulled into a cute bun. I braided it, then twisted it, and I am holding it in place with some pins while I fix the hair in place by sewing it with white thread. I am carefully going, trying to hide the thread as much as I can as I go. I could have used only rubber bands of course, but I feel like this is more secure. I am also leaving two pieces out, on the front, on the sides, it's because I am thinking about curling them. sure how I wanted to style the front piece, so I swirled it on the side and stitched it much like I did with the bun. I did not realize at this point that I made a completely different hairstyle than the one on my sketch. Oopsie. I blind my easily distracted mind. half of the time I don't know at all what I'm doing when it comes to sew clothes. But I still do my best, I still do, I really do. Well, <laughs> I used Truthwood clothes as my fabric source and the first thing I did here was to cut out pieces to make her a long sleeve shirt out of this beautiful white fabric. My patterns are far from perfect, but this fabric is stretchy and I find it to be a bit more forgiving. I'm not shy from starting a piece over when I'm not happy with it, but this wasn't the case here. Not this time. I'll be joining the front and back of the shirt by the shoulders before adding in the sleeves. what it looks like. I'll be joining the sides together with the fabric facing in. I've also opened the slit in the back and that's because I've been adding some velcro to the shirt a bit later on. I feel like my hand stitching is getting tighter and neater and actually that's really encouraging. Okay, so that's the effect I wanted to use for the skirt portion of the outfit. This is actually a cream-colored chiffon fabric over another that is a deep orangey fabric, with some gold sequins scattered over it. The chiffon is actually spot on for the colors of cookies or cakes that are maple syrup flavored, so I thought, well, this was a nice touch. 
So I started by cutting a circle out of both fabrics with the intention of adding a long gathered strip of it on the outline for a beautiful poofy effect. Both of these frayed quite easily, so I used some fray check on the darker one mainly and a bit on the light one, though my perfectionist side also requested that the beige pieces be eventually neatly hemmed, as they will show more. And that's the darker layer all done and stitched up with the gathered border, and now it was time for me to do the same to the beige one, after hemming the whole thing of course. And hemming I did. To achieve this effect, I needed a strip that was a few times as long as the outside edge of the skirt and I ended up hemming about 1.5 meter long of it. It took forever, by hand, and I did it in one sitting. I can't be mad at it though, because once it was done, I attached some velcro and found myself really happy with the result. A trick some friends gave me though is that a soldering iron could do a really nice job cutting chiffon and burn the edges just enough to seal it and prevent fraying. I tried my wood burning tool but it wasn't doing the best job sadly. I might try again in the future though. I wanted to give her some full fur around the neck and wrist and after a few tries I settled on this soft and fuzzy fabric. Anything longer that I had on hand felt way too thin. With that done, I wanted to complete the design by adding an off corset, but first I remembered that I also wanted some beige on her bust. I really should have planned for a whole dress. Actually, <laughs> I tried planning, but I'm really not good with following a plan, and I basically forgot all about it because life, distractions, and squirrels. Either way, I got to lace her in that corset that I made out of craft foam. Once painted and protected with some matte mod podge, it really makes for a nice and convincing full litter. I was starting to glue beads and pearls on her and even some tiny maple leaves that I found online when I realized that I did not like the corset. It was eating up her shape. So instead, I added a layer of beige chiffon to cover a midsection. Sadly, the way I stitched that made the top from removable to not removable, but at this point I wanted to finish this project. For some reason, that outfit made for a bit more of a challenge than I thought it was going to be. I told myself, might as well embellish that the best I can. And I thought I did a decent job, because I genuinely love that color story. I think it's just a different style from what I'm used to, and I'm not mad at it not one bit. I think I just need to adapt a little bit. I chose this design and I stand by it. Now to cover Rochelle's grey legs, I sewed some long white socks with pinning some fabric against a mannequin's doll. I turned them inside out once stitched, and the stretchy material really embraces the shape of the leg. Now for the shoes. I picked these little boots off a Monica Monster High doll. I don't hate the texture on these, but it still looks a bit too much like brain, so I decided to sand it just to tone it down a bit. And that's how they turned out once repainted with some acrylics. Then I decided I wanted to add a tiny extra accessory. And for that, I cut out tiny pieces out of a popsicle stick and used the sanding paper to round the corners a bit. Some hot glue and a bit of my leather and we have two servings of maple taffy ready to be eaten. To finish this project, I decided to also give her a cute burst, and I started with two circles and a long rectangle of craft foam that I hot glued to create a 3D shape. The white ribbon here is going to be the strap. In the end, to decorate it, I glued fabric on it more ribbons and some pearls. I also use hot glue to add some drippings of maple syrup. As the last detail, 
I added one of the two maple taffy sticks I made in her hair. And that, folks, concludes this repaint. Are you ready to meet her? There she is. What do you think of her? I honestly absolutely love her, but I think the other dolls in this collab are on a completely other level. Talking about that, you better go on everyone else's channel as soon as you finish this video. A lot of incredible talent. It has been amazing to collab with these amazing people. Go give them some love! We have Enchanterium, Valkyrie's World, Mr. Super Customs, Josephine's Creatures, Kiro's Workshop, and of course, Silene Plasticienne. All links in the description box. I hope you've all been well and healthy, folks. And do not worry, I'm still working on the old man. He's in progress, still waiting on some supplies in the mail, though, so I'll keep posting news about it in the community tab. In the meantime, though, please, stay safe.